So it is a midsummer day. It's very hot and it is the uh, basically the peak of the day here. The sun is at its highest point and what we're going to do is take the uh, quantum power meter here uh, from Apogee. This is the uh, MQ500. We're going to go in the uh, shaded areas and test the PAR levels to kind of give a good understanding of how much light is actually in shade outside compared to what a grow light puts out. Just for reference, we're going to test the uh, sunlight and it is a very clear day. And then we're going to test that tiny little red tree right there and the shade of it. So here is what the uh, micromole range is or the, the PAR level is on a sunny day. I'm kind of pointing it right at the sun for the most part. So we're pretty close to 2100 micromole. Okay, now we're in the shade of this little red tree and you can see that we are at about 50 to 60 micromole. I'll just kind of walk around here a little bit in different spots. You can see we're kind of, sorry about the reflections there, kind of averaging about the same. It's going up to 64, 65. 40 and so see in different spots it's going to be a little bit different this is really difficult with these reflections on the screen but obviously if there's a little bit of sun coming through in some spots it's going to be higher but let's go to a more dense spot of shade so we're going to go back under those uh bigger trees in the densest shade i think i have in my yard all right so right now i'm in the shade of this larger uh, maple tree see right there and there is no sunbeam is coming down where I'm standing, although you can see a few on the ground. But you can see I'm right at about 100 micromole. So it doesn't look like there's a lot of light here because I'm in the shade. But um, 100 micromole is, is quite a bit. And we'll compare that to what it looks like inside the house in a little bit here. So I'll just walk around. You can see. Let's see. So we're not in any sunbeams here. So we're down to 80. Hit a sunbeam there. 70. So let's go to the probably the densest spot over here. Okay, so I would say we're at about the densest spot right now. And you can see that we're in the 22 mi or 20 micromole range, uh, which isn't uh, it's not too bad. I mean, a lot of house plants don't even really get that much, even in a window. But we're basically like under this uh, tree here in the shade of a. Uh, well, basically a lot of wood and a lot of leaves. Let's check one more spot out. Okay, so now we are under the shade of my patio. So there is no tree leaves above me. There is no sunlight whatsoever coming through. But look at the meter here. 100 micromole in the shade here, complete shade. So all we're getting basically is just ambient light reflecting off of, uh, you know, maybe the ceiling a little bit. Pretty interesting, huh? So now we are in the house, and you can see here the meter. It's right next to the window. Sunny day, obviously no direct sunlight, but the kind of the point of this is to just to kind of show what ambient light is coming through windows. You can see we only got a about 20, so basically that was like the densest shade in the backyard that I could find. So right around the same thing. Quite a bit of difference there compared to the standing on the patio. And here is the kitchen bay window. And basically it's a three-sided window here, you can see. And putting this light meter right down by one of my plants here, which is a uh, Norfolk Island pine. Well, basically a bonsai pine. And you can see here that if I face this towards the direction of the window, I'm getting about 25, 20, 24, 25 micromoles. So, you can see there that's pretty close to what it would be like in the densest shade of the tree which is actually kind of interesting because you would think by looking at this since we're in the shade you know of the house but there's you know obviously still light coming in the window indirect light is actually um way less than what is on a patio in the shade and here i am standing in my kitchen with the meter and this is right about basically like waist height i am right under one of my lights on the ceiling and you can see that is only three micromole. And, you know, it, it looks bright in here. It doesn't look like I'm in the shade. But this amount of light in the house is still way less light than what is on my patio in the shade. And that's just a matter of, uh, you know, relativity and perception. It just, it might seem like it's bright. 
because your eyes are adjusted to it. But if you go outside in the shade, you're actually getting more light. Think about that. You're actually getting more light in the densest shade underneath the tree than you are in the house with the lights on. And here is one thing that is interesting. And this is the reason why I kind of wanted to make this little video here, because you look at these lights here. I got four strip lights. This is using about 96 watts, I believe. Uh, they are fairly bright. And I'm testing right here at my one of my banana plants. This is the uh, Blue Java Ice Cream Banana Tree I'm growing. Really hoping to get some bananas out of this. But anyways, it looks pretty bright, right? I got light coming through the leaves. It looks pretty, uh, you know, suitable. But look at the power range on the meter. 93. Well, let me angle a little bit better here. Oh, same thing. So we got uh, about 86, 90 or whatever. So pretty close to about 90 micromole at this leaf right here. And that's pretty bright. That's actually, that's actually still less light than in the shade on my patio. The shade on my patio is actually putting, it has more light on it than what you see here with this light. And that looks like it's pretty bright. Even to the eye, it looks like it's bright enough. So the reason why I kind of wanted to do this here is because um, when you have a grow light on something, you think it's bright. You know, if you put a light in your ceiling, you put it over a plant, and you're only getting two micromole at the plant, well, you might as well just be setting it next to a windowsill because you think that's giving it enough light, and in fact, the windowsill is probably giving it actually more, even though there's no sunlight coming through it. Uh, so we'll just test one more thing real quick. So here I got the sensor placed at the floor of one of my grow tents right now where I'm running an experiment, and you can see that it is about 111 micromoles at this distance, and if you look here, and I got the camera set to a manual uh, focus here, but um, I kind of wanted to put this in a little perspective to be able to see this. So you see the sensors on the floor right there, and it's about two feet from this light. And to the naked eye, uh, this is, let me dim it down a little bit. That's about the brightness level to the naked eye, what it actually looks like. So the lights, you know, it looks like a pretty bright light. And this is about, like I said, about two feet from the light but it's only putting out right around 120. It's gonna change a little bit depending on the angle of it, but still, my patio in the shade, in the complete shade, has more light and ambient light just being reflected all around from the outside than this light here is putting out with all of its, hundred, I think, 130 watts with this LED light. You know, that looks pretty bright. It looks pretty bright, but it's not putting out as much light as you think it is because this is just a matter of perception. Now, if you were to take this light and put it outside in the patio and without looking at the light itself, no one would really be able to tell that there's a light on on the patio if they didn't see the light above them. Now, if you were to hang that light up on the ceiling of the patio and walk underneath it and no one looked up, no one would know that's on because that would just blend with the ambient light in, that's on the shade of the patio. So, you know, when your eyes adjust to things going inside, outside, it looks like something is darker and this is, this is kind of the reason or the point that I'm getting to is that, you know, if you're going to put a plant, you know, like those plants under a light, and if you're not, if you're kind of new to horticulture, if you take a light like this or just a regular house light and you put it, you know, way, way up top in the ceiling and you put some lights underneath it, just because visibly it looks like there's light there, in fact, there's probably very, very little light. And you saw when I'm testing the kitchen, only two micromole are getting there. You know, your eyes are adjusted to it, but that's not what the plants see. Uh, or let's put it this way, the plants don't have eyes. That's not what the plants need. They need more than that. You know, some house plants like Pothos ivy can grow basically almost in the dark, but when you're talking about other things that you're growing, such as like lettuce or other types of plants that just need more light, you can't use your eyes to tell you how much light is getting on that plant that it needs. So having a meter like this, uh, if you're doing experimental stuff, um, this is a necessity. But like in one of my other videos that I talked about, or actually, actually two of them, um, you can uh, get yourself just a, uh, a lumen meter, not a, I'm sorry, a lux meter, and I'll, I'll link a video up top here about that. And you can use that to see how much light your plants are getting. And it's a very cheap way. Obviously, it's not quite as perfect as a, as a par meter, but I discussed that in the video. So that's for this video. I just thought I'd make it really quick because uh, some people might like to know this stuff. Thanks for watching.